Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics and in this video I'd like to discuss the newly posted profits from Shell in the UK to complete the overall picture for 2022 and use their example to highlight just how unsuitable the government the Conservatives are and in particular just how unsuitable our tax regime is. Never mind the very low net rates of tax that this massive corporation pays. Even the tax paid on their windfall profits from last year is somewhat pathetic. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So I'm going to start off by saying that, yes, tax on very, very high earnings, especially for multinational corporations, is very complex. A lot of little wrinkles for you to get lost in. But I would also say that one of the reasons why tax affairs for such corporations can be so complex it, wealthy individuals as well as businesses, is because they lobby politicians to make them complex so that they can get away with less tax. Oh, yeah, yeah, we pay like 2p uh, taxes a year on our like 100 billion pounds of profits, but it's all very complicated. So in this video, I want to go through like the tax theory for these oil companies like Shell, who've made enormous extra, extra profits as a result of the war in Ukraine as well as the, the practice, as far as I can tell, and compare it to an ordinary struggling worker in the UK. So first of all, a few weeks ago, I was reading a BBC article on this, and it noted that Shell pays, you know, the 30% corporation tax, a 10% surcharge on top, and then the fated 25% windfall tax that was introduced last year. The same article then said, well, this takes their tax burden to 75%. And I thought, what? I mean, not all of their profits are windfall profits, so the 25% windfall tax is not payable on all of their profits. And also, 30% plus 10% plus 25% adds up to 65%, not 75%. What's going on here? Am I missing something? Or did they just get a drunk chimp to write the article and a coked up parrot to edit it? Also, one thing the article does get right, though, is that Shell get to reduce their tax burden by counting lots of things against their profits. This allows them to post smaller profits for tax purposes than they're actually making. You know, and there's a sliding scale of things like this in our society and, and others, too, around the world. It's not just in the UK. Um, I mean, let's just scale things down a, a, a lot. Let's compare, uh, say, a sole trader like me to an ordinary worker. Let's say in order to have a studio for my recording, I needed to use a small office in the next town. Let's say I wasn't able to build this and, and I had to drive to this place, uh, you know, every day there and back. And let's say the salaried worker lives next door and they have to drive to their work in the same office block. We go to the same office block, but we drive in different cars because different times, whatever. You know, and we do it each day. I get to deduct the cost of petrol from my earnings to reduce my taxable income that I post to HMRC because it's a business expense. It's, it's, it's an expense I wouldn't have if I weren't doing that work. Now, the salaried worker is still only spending petrol to get to work and back, just like I am, but they don't get to reduce their tax burden because of it. Their tax burden is entirely dependent on what their salaried income is, nothing to do with any expenses they may have. So immediately, a salaried worker and a business owner earning the same amount, the business owner pays less tax. Or to take a more relevant example for me, see, I can reduce, I can adjust the income I post to HMRC by making a reasonable adjustment for the energy I use while working. I've got lights on here, I've got a computer on when I'm working on my computer, that's all energy being used, but that's a business expense. I can try and work out roughly what that is and, and post that as, as part of my expenses, reducing my overall taxable income. A salaried worker working from home, now they are allowed to make an adjustment but it's a fixed maximum at way lower than the actual cost of energy they will be consuming. And that's to say nothing of me paying less national insurance than a salaried worker on the same income, even after expenses are factored in. You know, the tax system is designed to extract more tax out of a salaried worker than a business owner earning the same amount. I mean, you know, take when I was a teacher, when I was working as a teacher, and I would sometimes, as many teachers do, you know, buy some bits of stationery or some other things for me to do my job. It became much more necessary as uh, when the Conservatives came into office. You know, we went from when Labour in power to, oh, I need some red pens. Can I have some red pens, please? The Whoever was like the equivalent of the office manager go, here's some red pens, Phil. You know, 10 years later, the Tories are in power. Oh, I need some red pens. Well, you know where WH Smiths is, don't you? 
Oh, I'll buy myself then, shall I? Yeah, you do that. I buy some pens now because I might want to doodle some things when I'm not at my computer. Ah, oh, it's a business expense. No problem at all. No problem. But in the context of the industrial action which has been taking place for a while now and ramped up a lot yesterday, it is worth remembering that a tax system has basically got two purposes. The first is, of course, the literal purpose, removing money from the financial system. But in terms of how we consider it in practical terms, covering public expenditure. The second is to encourage or discourage certain practices. For example, no VAT on fruit or vegetables because they're considered part of a healthy diet. Loads of tax on alcohol and tobacco because, well, they're very bad for you. Similar thing for tax breaks. A business doing something the government approves of gets tax breaks to encourage them and others to do more of it. So in labour in power, you add tax breaks for clean energy, solar panels, wind turbines, things like that. A business doing something that the government disapproves of might face a heavier tax burden to discourage that practice. So let's go back to Shell now. The last time Shell paid tax in the UK of any kind was 2017. Since then, not a penny. So that 30% corporation tax and the 10% extra that they're supposed to pay doesn't look so comforting now, does it? Oh, well, at least they have to pay the 40% of all their profits. Do they? Why haven't they been then? Because we know that that also applied over the last five years, yet Shell somehow used our tax regime, which is supposed to charge them 40% tax on their profits, to pay no profit at all. That means they must be posting figures to HMRC that go, oh, we didn't make any profit again. Oh, we've been doing this for five years. We're such a bad business. I mean, this is strange. Shell are very active in the UK. But then the war in Ukraine broke out like big time and the cost of oil and gas rose massively. Not because it was suddenly harder to extract, refine or transport, of course. Had that been the case, the prices would have increased, of course, but the profits would have been maintained. They'd have just put up the prices enough to maintain those profits. The likes of Shell would have been posting similar profits to the year before. But no, they were charging more because they could. You know, there was a time when the media would have called this out for what it is, war profiteering. And this is where a government should have said, look, this isn't on. Either maintain your business model. You know, you can maintain your profits as you like. In actual fact, you could show a bit of solidarity by reducing them a bit, but maintain them if you must. But any extra you are making, we're just going to take in the form of the windfall tax. The windfall tax should be 100% minus whatever they'd be paying on it anyway. We'll just take it all. But the price has stayed high because governments didn't do that. And ours certainly didn't. And you may think to yourself, ah, but Phil, Rishi Sunak, he got forced to, didn't he? You know, back when he was the first of the four chancellors we had last year, he was forced to apply a windfall tax last May. I remember it in the news. Yes, indeed. But there were a couple of problems with it. First of all, 25% might sound OK, especially if it's on top of 40% tax Shell are supposed to be paying on their profits anyway. If it's actually paid. But the windfall tax was announced last summer. We are being told that Shell will say that they're only going to start paying the windfall tax on the last quarter of profits from last year. And it's going to amount to £1.7 billion. And you think, so, well, if the windfall tax is 25% and Shell are going to be paying £1.7 billion in windfall taxes, does that mean that their windfall profits for 2022 amounted to about £7 billion then? No, no. In 2021, they posted profits of £15.6 billion in the UK. In 2022, it's going to be £32.3 billion. Their overall profits have more than doubled in 2022 compared to 2021. And those figures are adjusted as well, apparently. That's what the report said. So we can assume that their windfall profits for 2022 are around about £16.7 billion. Won't be much less than that. So that should mean they're paying about £4.2 billion in windfall taxes. But they're going to be paying one7 so that means they're escaping with about two and a half billion quid worth of windfall tax. Not to worry, though, the government's got a plan. They've sorted it all by forcing nurses into another big terms, real, a real terms big pay cut. Obviously, public sector workers can manage with less money much more easily than a massive oil company. I mean, the nurses have been paying taxes for the past five years. Shell are so hard up, they weren't able to pay any tax at all since 2017, the poor little bunnies. A new entrant to the NHS Band 5 scale, which is where nurses reside, earns £27,055 per year right now. That is their salary now. 
That means they pay 17.8% of all their income to HMRC in the form of income tax and national insurance. Obviously, they pay a great deal more tax than that, VAT and other taxes, which large corporations also tend to escape as well. Now, with what Shell say they are paying in the form of a windfall tax, they are basically paying 10.2%. And that's 10.2% on the extra profits they've been making, not on all their profits. The profits that they wouldn't have had at all if Putin weren't a genocidal lunatic. Now, you may be thinking, well, hang on a minute, Phil, be fair. What about the other 40% they'll be paying on top of it as well? Surely it's more like 50%. Yes, OK, it's not the 65% that they should be paying, you know, and maybe that needs looking at, but it's at least 50%. Be fair. If Shell paid zero tax for five consecutive years before last year, if they managed to not pay any corporation tax in those years, why do we think they'll suddenly be paying their full whack of it now? That's £1.7 billion. Might not just be the only windfall tax they pay. Unless I see information to the contrary, and maybe I will, based on their past record, I'll be wondering if that's all the tax they're going to be paying altogether. At which point, the actual rate goes down well below 10%. You know, we have a tax regime that forces the poorest to pay a set rate of tax on their income without being allowed any adjustments for work-related expenses. It allows small business owners and sole traders like myself to make reasonable adjustments, but we can't take the piss. But for the massively wealthy, you can be making more profit, as Shell have, more profit than the total wage bill for every NHS nurse and every NHS doctor in the UK. Every single one. And yet not pay any actual taxes. Compare the total taxes paid by every NHS nurse and every NHS doctor in the country. And then compare that to the 0% tax paid by an oil corporation. And ask yourself, why the government think that medical staff need to pay their taxes, but oil giants don't? What does it say about the priorities of a government which will allow this? But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.